Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, it's time to start doing the work to this amplifier. And you can see we've already taken some of it apart. And this is what I'm going to call a build series rather than a mod series because there's very little of the original circuit that we're going to be using. If you're curious about that, watch the first video in the series. The rest of these are going to be about building this amp. And this is basically a gut and rebuild. We're using very little, if any, of the original circuit other than the power supply is very similar. So, yeah, let's get busy building this little amp. So now we're going to move forward into doing the plate resistors and that part of the circuit. So on the plate side, we've got this 255 volts here that we need to create. One side of it goes up here to the plate load on the 12AX7. So it goes to this 470K resistor, it goes to the plate. And then we've got this 150K resistor that creates the voltage divider to ground through this 820 ohm resistor. And that's going to help get us to this 1.4, looks like 1.46 is what they're shooting for. Basically 1.4 volts here on the cathode without having to use a really high value cathode resistor. The reason that they're doing this is if this was like a 5 or 6K resistor to get there kind of naturally, you would have a lot of degenerative feedback across this resistor, which would lower the gain of this tube. And it would cause issues trying to insert this negative feedback here. We'd have to add some extra parts here. We'd have to put in a cap across part of the resistor, probably have two resistors in series. And so adding this 150K resistor to create this voltage divider is, I think, a really smart solution to the issue. The other thing, too, that this does is this creates a pathway to ground for all these power supply capacitors so we don't need a bleeder resistor for the power supply. The voltage on these caps will get bled through here to ground. Now this does need to be a 2 watt part. I went ahead and used some 2 watts for both of these given that these are going to have about a half a watt of current or especially this is going to have like a half a watt of current going through it. So definitely use like 2 watt parts here. So we're going to wire this stuff up and then over here on this side we've installed the output transformer and we've run this wire up here to the plate of the output tube and then we're going to be connecting this screen to this point in the power supply down here to get our 255 volts on the screen. So let me show you what all that looks like. Over here this point right here is the high voltage DC off of the choke, which is this point right here. So from here, we've got one leg of this resistor comes from this point, and then this 820 ohm resistor connects to this tag strip. And then while I was in here working, I went ahead and ran a 820 ohm resistor from this point right here over to this tag point for when we get working on this other channel. So we have our 255 volts sitting right here. And this is our 22 UF cap. And if you remember, this is a ground. You can see the black wire back here. So this is ground. This is 255 volts. This blue wire right here, we've got it run down to pin 9 on our output tube. And then pin 7 is the plate, and that is where the output transformer lead connects to. 
So you can see under here, this is the output transformer wire, and this black wire goes to the plate of the output tube, and this red wire is going to connect to this point right here, which is the high voltage DC off the choke. So from this 255 volt connection here, after this 820 ohm resistor, we have our plate load resistor, which is our 470K, that connects to this terminal, which is the plate of the input or driver tube. And then this red wire connects down here to pin 5 on our driver tube. So we've put this red wire in up to this terminal, and then this 470K resistor over to our voltage point. And then these two terminals here give a great place to put our coupling capacitor that goes from the plate of the driver tube to the grid of the output tube, which on the schematic is right here. You can see there's the where the 470K is going to the plate, and then we'll connect this 0.1 UF coupling cap, a film cap, from here to the grid of the output tube. That's where the signal goes into the output tube. We've got a perfect spot here to put that 0.1 UF cap across here. So then the final stuff we have is we need to put this 150K resistor from the same 255 volt point over here to the cathode of the driver tube. And we've already put in the 820 ohm cathode resistor from ground to here. So then we can just connect from here with this 150K to the cathode to have the voltage divider to set the bias voltage for the driver tube. And I've put a little bit of this PTFE tubing across these exposed leads here just you know don't have to do that necessarily i just think it makes the amp look a little neater and provides a little bit of insulation here just kind of for safety and this is the same kind of ptfe tubing that they use for 3d printers and so i'll put a link in the description to the little tubing here that i use so then finally i started working a little bit on wiring up the speaker end of the output transformer. And you can see here too that I scraped off the paint where this green ground wire connects to the chassis. They had this bolted down on top of paint and I'm not even sure it was making a connection to the chassis. And that is the only way that this is a safe amplifier to use with high voltage inside it like this if there is a failure that this ground wire will connect to the house ground and will make the amp blow a fuse and if this isn't grounded to the chassis the chassis could become hot and so make sure you scrape the paint off of there so you get a really nice solid ground between this ground wire and the chassis and yes, I know that this wire is supposed to have its own ground point. They've got it bolted down with one of the output transformer leads. And if you're really concerned about that, there's some other holes here you could use to attach that ground point to. But I'm just going to attach it where they had it with the paint scraped off, which is an improvement. So here are the wires coming out of the output transformer. This amp, let me tilt this up so we can see this a little better. So you see here, these are the wires from the output transformer. Put some heat shrink tubing on them to insulate it where it goes through the chassis. You could put a grommet there, I guess, but the factory just puts some heat shrink tubing on it. So I put that on the new transformer leads. The black wire comes over here and connects to a little kind of bus that goes between the two grounds here to ground the output terminals and it's also got the view meters and the little caps and stuff that are related to the view meters all attached here 
This one also has the headphone jack with a switch. So it's got this white wire that goes up to the front of the amp. And then it's got this gray wire that comes back and connects to the speaker terminal. That's coming from the switch on the front. I went ahead and added this tag strip here so we would have some attachment points to put in the feedback components. And then we can hook this little capacitor for the VU meter, can attach to this little point here. And then we've got this point here to have the negative feedback wire that would then run up to this point right here, which is the cathode of the driver tube. So we're kind of getting prepared for doing all of that stuff. So this yellow wire hooks up here, the white wire connects. If you didn't have headphone jack switch, you could run a wire, you know, from here over to the speaker jack. And then this green wire goes straight to the 4 ohm tap. And I've had people ask, I've noticed that the headphone switch doesn't turn off the speakers if I'm using the 4 ohm tap. Yeah, that's just the way this thing's wired. And I guess if you were planning on only using the 4 ohm tap or you had 4 ohm speakers, you could rewire some of this so that this switch was interrupting the 4 ohm instead of the 8 ohm. But you still need to run the feedback loop off the 8 ohm switch. So, yeah, you could get a little creative on rewiring how the headphone switch works if you're planning on using only the 4 ohm taps. But I'm going to wire this thing back up like it was originally. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So we don't have a whole lot left to do here. I do think I'm going to go ahead and wire up the other channel and replicate what we did over here. And one of the issues is this choke wire isn't very long. And so I got to tie the positive of the output transformer leads to this choke wire and then put it through this eyelet right here and then solder it through the top. And once I do that, probably not going to be able to flip this up like we can right now. The other thing I want to do is take this standoff loose and I want to scrape the paint off the chassis right here so that this center tap gets a good ground to the chassis. And you can see here we've removed the back tube socket so I need to remove all that. Oh, and the other thing I didn't show you too, this wire right here was originally daisy chained to this tube socket. Because you can see over here on this channel, originally the heater for this front tube socket was daisy chained to the back tube socket, which was then daisy chained over the heater. And since we've removed this rear tube socket, you just disconnect this from the rear tube socket and connect it over here. And you can see we did this on the other channel here. We just daisy chained this to this eight pin octal socket and these these green wires are the heaters so once we get done with doing this other channel and get it all wired up then i'm going to finish running the feedback loose wiring i've got to order some the mica caps for the feedback loop off mauser so probably next week and I do have surgery on Wednesday, so we may not get many videos done left on this thing. I may kind of do this other section in a video and kind of show you in real time. Now that I've figured out how I'm going to lay this out on this channel, kind of show you the soldering and stuff on this one. Probably going to go ahead and strip it because I don't think that takes video instruction to learn how to like unsolder stuff and you do need to clean the solder out of all these little tag things you can either use a solder sucker or some desoldering wick like that so let me go ahead and get like i said this this side stripped 
And then I'll decide if I want to do this on camera or not because it definitely takes a lot longer doing it on camera. But I know you guys probably want to see it in real time doing it. So, And the other thing I've considered doing in this little amp, somebody in the comments asked about the RH84 amplifier, which is a, another variant of a single driver with a EL84 output tube. And his version used like a solid state current source on the cathode of the output tube. And I really don't want to get into that complication, especially given that this circuit layout or this tag strip board really lends itself well to this Dave G or DG1 circuit design. As you can see, it really just lays itself out really well. Main difference between the two circuits was that the RH84 uses the plate to plate or shade feedback that I'm very fond of using in my amplifiers versus what Dave did using the global negative feedback. The only other big difference that I saw was Dave is using a 0.1 UF coupling cap and the RH uses a 0.22 UF coupling cap and might need to use a little larger cathode bypass cap if I go with the shade feedback type of negative feedback, which is a local instead of global. So one thing I may try is, because it's simple enough to change a couple of parts, would be to put a 0.22 UF, and that's actually what the amp comes with, and then put something like a 330 UF cap on the bypass for the output tube cathode. And then instead of running this global negative feedback with the Zobel and that complication, see how it performs just putting 100K between the plate of the driver tube and the output tube. And then compare one channel to the other. And it's a good way to compare the two topologies, which I've been kind of curious about myself. And so I think we're going to do that. And then if you're rebuilding this, you don't have to replace this coupling cap. It already comes with the correct one. You just need to add a little capacitance across this. Might even use a 470 UF. I don't know. We'll kind of do that calculation later. But anyway... That's just a thought. Make two different type amplifier designs in the same chassis and then we can compare one to the other on the audio analyzer suite and see if the simplified version has a similar performance. And actually now that I've got some good mono recordings, I can compare one channel to the other and see which one sounds better. So anyway, I think it's a good place to wrap up this video. So I hope you're enjoying this build series on this little amp. I think at the end of the day, this is going to be a more attractive amp than the little Maggie console pull that this is based off of. And so this is a fun little project. It'll be a neat little amp when we're done. If you're enjoying this, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters, people that have joined the membership on the channel as well as folks that make donations or send me amps to modify like this one here and provide fun content so we can all learn about tube audio. And until the next video, have a nice day.